The Book of Recollections, Episode 16, Jailbreak, by Dysylvania. I am the Book of Recollections, and today is going to be marvelous, full of action and adventure, and as the title of the episode suggests, a jailbreak. Oh, shiver me, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, pardon my piratish? <coughs> Sorry. Let's get to it. The courtyard of Gogmagog Prison, home to a guillotine and the pit, was disturbed by the bellows of a burly Goliath, screaming the name Hebdom. As he ran towards the courtyard, there was a twinkle in his eyes that displayed both faith and the focused attention of someone acting upon visions. His haste was cut short by the closed gate, which made him ask for aid from a gang of Goliaths that prayed at a nearby temple. Telling them that the big head in the courtyard spoke to him, they quickly abandoned their menial tasks and joined him as they began to attack and eat the rusted gate alongside the men that guarded it. Taking advantage of the onslaught, the Goliath known as Tulrok, aided by Halria at the behest of Adam, managed to scale the temple and up the mountain, which also happened to be the prison wall. Once inside, chaos erupted as Tulrok managed to release some prisoners, one of which introduced himself as Jake Dover, and the two quickly made their way towards Adam, Kaith, and Isari, making sure to set free any prisoner along the way. The three were kept in a new cell on the third level of the prison, overlooking the courtyard. As Halria stopped in front of their cell, Tulrok felt an immediate connection with Isari, the same connection he felt towards his best friend. Before leaving their cell, Isari gently nudged Kaith, reminding her that everything worked out just as she said. That optimistic outlook made their already friendly bond that much more powerful. All around them, there were sounds of battle as more and more prisoners engaged the guards. What was even more surprising was the appearance of a manticore with its shackles broken, flying through the air. Looking down at the courtyard from their vantage point, Isari saw a number of bodies with discolored, pitch-white skin, eyes, and hair. At that point, the group was trying to figure out where their belongings were being kept. Jake Dover was more than willing to share that information with them, in exchange for three favors, but due to Kate's wit, he was convinced to drop all of his requests. As our protagonists made their way towards the storage room, their attention was drawn towards the cell, which held three Saturni priestesses who asked the SKPs to unlock it. Although they knew that the three might have been safer in the cell, they allowed them to leave. As the priestesses dashed, the cloak fell off one of the women, revealing a raggedy dress and a pair of fully skeletal legs. That came as a bit of a shock to the group, but time was of the essence, so they did not dwell on it. Their search for the storage room led the group to the first floor, at the end of which lay a door that opened into a long hallway. As they entered, the sound of gears began to rumble from behind the walls, and the columns lining the hallway began to spin, revealing razor-sharp blades. Their way back was sealed. The group, having no other escape from their predicament, decided to meet the challenge head-on. That, however, was deemed a much more deadly task than they had anticipated, as Isari, after valiantly trying to keep on against the mechanized onslaught, was cut down by one of the blades and her limp body fell to the ground. As Kate desperately tried to stabilize her, nearly costing her own life, she saw how her body began to emanate the same radiant color she'd witnessed when Pax brought the flame to surrender and feared an imminent explosion. To everyone's awe, the explosion, which burned Kaith in the process, disintegrated Asari's Asimar body, and a being of light remained, a deva. Tulrok, emboldened by what he had witnessed, took his javelin and, with amazing aim, threw it at the cogwheels of one of the traps, disabling it. All the while, Adam, who was now inside the storage room, found the mechanism that deactivated the other traps and opened the sealed doorway. With the traps disabled, the group was free to enter the storage room and retrieve their items. In the clutter of the chamber, Adam's attention was caught by a stack of documents, one of which bore the description and drawing of a man with long hair and green eyes. That was the same description of the individual who Adam thought was his father's assassin. The other document talked about a boy that seemed somewhat familiar to Adam, 
the boy's address being the Midnight Orphanage. With nothing more to be uncovered, the group made their way to the courtyard. Outside, chaos reigned supreme as guards fought off against the prisoners and the other Goliaths. That was a blessing in disguise as the party managed to use the mayhem to their advantage, sneaking past the occupied guards towards the mountain pass. Thirty minutes into their journey, the group realized that they were outside the radius of Gogmagog and that their next task should be to find a place to camp. The best place to keep low was a crevice in the nearby mountain, which led towards an underground tunnel. By the time night fell upon the world, the group was standing around Isari's new form, which was as warm as a campfire. Tolrock shared with the group that, back home, not only was he a follower of the Order of the Hebdomads, being blessed by his priest, but he was also one of the smartest people there. Adam shared that he sought the means of taking his rightful place in the Astral Sea. Upon hearing that Adam and Kate were looking for ways to dethrone the Regent Queen, Isari shared with them that an earthquake damaged a large number of the Red Kingdom's settlements. She was sent to the Green Kingdom to prevent an all-out war between the two regions and to discuss with the Queen how to quench the fires of war. In Isari's own words, whenever there's war, everyone loses. As the group made themselves comfortable for a well-earned rest and, after Tulrog fell asleep trying to recall his vision in which Greenspring and the apple tree were burning, our attention was redirected from the depths of the mountain towards the heights of the gossamer night sky. The legend's talons were carrying Shaklashak into a cave found atop a high mountain. Thrown to the ground, Shaq was met by a half-wolf woman who exuded power and proudly bore a plethora of battle wounds. Her name was Livia, and their conversation turned sour when she asked the legend to devour Shaq, to which the bird vehemently opposed, sharing that the snake folk was one of Jormungandr's followers. As Livia made circles around Shaq, she asked him of the whereabouts of the people he escaped the Tomb of Time with. But Shaq refused to share the information, and that enraged the she-wolf, who attacked him. After a few minutes of brutal fighting skills demonstrated by Livia and Shaq, the spirits died down. Feeling hungry, the snake folk asked for food, and, although taken aback by Livia, tearing a piece of meat from her thigh, he devoured it. Shaq felt instantly rejuvenated. The she-wolf revealed to Shaq that she was one of Fenrir's pack. Although the snake folk tried to sway her on his side, she would have none of it, letting Shaq know that one of them had to die. With the legend's intervention, Livia showed Shaq that she spoke on the bird's behalf, informing him that Hugen and Munin had other plans, which saw the death of Shaq's companions. Once more, Shaq reiterated that he had no idea where they were. As Livia uttered Kate's name, Shaq disclosed to them that both her and Adam were taken prisoners by the Queen's guards. The legend dashed outside, leaving nothing but dust in his wake. As the two beast folk were left alone, the she-wolf stated that change was on its way to Greenspring. Three days had passed before, under the light of the full moon, the legend returned to the beast folk, inviting the she-wolf to accompany him and ordering Shaq to stay put. As the two left, Shaq seized that opportunity and began to make his way down the mountain and, after an excruciating display of grit, he managed to reach a forest. A monolith wing-shaped shadow enveloped him and Hugin and Munin appeared out of nowhere in front of Shaklashak, looking at him through eyes that resembled those of Jormungandr. The two lamented the state in which the mighty Shaq found himself, not only punished for his loyalty by the Great Snake, but robbed of the power that he was entitled to. A bargain was struck between them, in which he had to prove his loyalty towards the two mythical ravens, promising him unimaginable power and a clear path towards achieving immortality. You gotta admit, this Shaq fellow has guts. Bargaining with another mythical creature? What's next? A bargain with Fenrir? After hunting down a magical deer, Shaq went back to the cave awaiting the legend's return. Within the cave, he managed to fill a flask of poison from his pet snake Vaj and shared the hunted deer with his friend. Upon their return, Livia told Shaq that the legend wished for his presence in his search for the others, and although the snake folk extended the same proposition to her, the she-wolf refused. Before leaving, she offered Shaklashak a piece of her flesh, which the snake folk accepted and put it in his pouch. The search for Kate and Adam had begun.
This was the recap for episode 16 of Vim as told by the Book of Recollections. I was Ruxandra Vorotnak, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite.